uh, what I've been doing on my machine is I've been bringing up um, a code be my instance very basic installation a Jira also and a symphony I'm by the way running everything on top of uh, docker images here so what I'll do is I log into symphony it's a new 3.2 version and um, as Ralph already indicated I mean everything starts from the adapter so I will go ahead and install adapters um, so we'll start with the Jira adapter oh have it here. Let's see where is it? Where is it? I want the uh, 4431. That's the latest one. It's a little bit different from the screenshot we saw. Um, so install the adapters. In the 3.2 version, there's a couple of things that are automatically installed along with the adapter. For example, also the manuals. That's that's brand new. I'm gonna show it in a second. Um, so that's our Jira adapter. And uh, first of all, what I can do in Symfony is I can attach a config set to the to the adapter that is basically the server connection. And the config set is used as an alias, so I'll just call it local because it's here all on my machine. And then I point to the Jira instance that is running on my box here. Um, just the base URL, the rest is calculated, and I just pass in the authentication piece. And then usually what I can do is I can just save. Um, on the save, we usually already check the connection. However, what you can do is you can run a ping to check the connection. And then as, on a cycle, like every 15 minutes, Symfony is, is going to try to talk to all of these uh, config sets or aliases for the server connection to find out if stuff is um, is available. Um, I'll do the same thing quickly for the um, for the uh, code beamer adapter. So submit it. It's going to be installed. And then usually on the components that are uh, installed along with the adapters, we can already see there is for each of them we do find a REST-based interface now in the new Symfony 3.2. So all of the features that the adapters do expose, um, you can test them uh, with this little web, uh, web interface. Another component that is brand new um, is the piece of the documentation. Like we can jump in and just see, just see the manuals for the adapters right away on the system, maybe for those that have seen Symphony before as part of the improvements we, we did in the new version. Um, once I have installed CodeBeam, I have also to hook it with the system itself. So let's call it local as well. And then we have some connection data to fill in. I think it's called CodeBeamer, it's CE REST, I guess. There's a user, I hope I remember the password. Uh, and the project is called Argo. Just save it, um, ping it again, just to make sure, okay. And then uh, what we need is another component that is for Symfony 3.2 is uh, from an area that Ralph already introduced to you is the, temp is a, is a template. So we have been basically uh, putting together all the best practices that we found in the past 10 years into this into this uh, this library here it's called simply basic and all the integration processes will um, will be built based on on that so i've been just coming up with a with a combination of let's say jira and code bemo install that process as well um, and then just like the adapters, the processes themselves do also have configurations. So we say this is for the webinar, um, a config set, and then it comes with individual configuration uh, to the process. So we'll have to hook it with, uh, with the CodePrimo connection, with the JIRA connection. We have to tell it in case it's going to create new CodePrimo items, which is one of the things it does, um, which, uh, which tracker it should create it. We'll have to put a query, which basically describes which items from JIRA we want to synchronize. And then uh, we'll have to provide, uh, oh, I just see, sorry guys, I've installed the wrong version of the process. Let me just change that. Um, and that's the one we want to go for. Sorry about that. I just saw it from the 
from the uh, configuration. So I just select the tracker ID, the Jira query, and then uh, two mapping scenarios. That's part of, of the transformation process in the synchronization where we translate the, the, um, the attributes and the values coming from Jira into, into CodeBeamer. So I'm just going to jump off and create a couple of those. It's like basic one for, let's say, that's a Jira mapping. What we can also see uh, for these mappings, we do have scenario types, which is kind of a container. So if you have a growing number of integrations that you handle with Symfony, you're going to have a couple of different types just to make it easier to find the right um, the right mapping. And then we have, say, this is Jira basic. Uh, we just have to tell it, we go from Jira, um, which of the configs is local, all types. We go into code be more which of the configs is local and which of the trackers we want to create bugs. That's what we said. And then I can, I can basically tell the system how the translation works. So on an attribute basis, this is going to be like, um, for example, the summary coming from uh, Jira is going to be translated into the uh, name of, um, of code people that makes sense and then the minimum configuration I'll have to take here is I also have to put the description and map it into the description. That's what I have to do. There's all kinds of different um, mapping scenarios that you could come up with um, um, that can be con configured basically in the mapping module. So once we have that, we can just let it know, okay, you do the Jira basic whenever you do a synchronization. I'll save that one. And then one of the options uh, that we have to control the process execution is the scheduler. Again, we find these schedule groups. They are like for, for a growing amount of, um, of configurations that you take, uh, a good way to, uh, to differentiate the, the different um, areas. And then we have our webinar schedule going on. It's all controlled by a cron string, but in the 3.2 version, we have to come up with a little interface to uh, to give some some background. Because even myself, I was <laughs> kind of not remembering all the time what uh, what the individual configuration options are. So you can now um, you have guidance on that one. I'll just select Jira. I'll just select uh, my configuration of the process, and then um, we could we could just wait. 10 15 or I can just run it on a on a request basis however uh, still my Jira is empty so I better also create an issue so we can say there's a Jira task 01 Jira task 01 and then it's gonna be here it's part of the project um, and I can then let's say I execute it and then we find this diagnose page where we can see what's going on on the server. It's it's very simple here in that case, but on a, in a growing system, you're going to see all these um, all the processes that are, that are executed. And due to the way how we handle the process, you will also see the progress. So you have a very good live view into into what's going on on the server. As expected, if we check the tracker in CodeBeamer, there's a there's a corresponding um, ticket created here and it just follows all the rules that I've been setting up. Um, so that's that's basically um, that's basically um, how how things are going. So we can create a Jira task 02, Jira task 02. I can create another one, Jira task, task 03, Jira task 03, and then we'll do the same thing. So we'll just have the process run again. And we'll see. So this time it's going to be scoped three objects, succeeded with three objects. And um, in the uh, box tracker, we're going to find all three now. Um, that is the that is the basic functionality. Symphony itself, uh, besides the diagnose that we saw, besides the scheduling that we saw, besides the mapping that we saw, also has a, a persistence module in the background. This is actually where we um, where we drop check some information about the objects. So, like if I just now rerun the process, 
um, on the schedule, it would basically do nothing. That's why it's finished immediately, uh, because it detects there's no changes on the on the underlying um, on the underlying objects here, because we have all the checksums in the database and we can compare it. As soon as I touch it, for example, I make a change. Oh, let's make a change. I'll make a change on three. It's going to pick it. Um, it's going to pick it and run it. So, okay, it's my, my environment seems to be quite fast anyway. Um, so we are then on the tracker side here and in all three, oh, was it on two? There, we're going to, we're going to follow the changes um, accordingly. Um, the persistence itself is quite an important component because it also determines a couple of different behaviors um, uh, that we that we offer. In my case, I have implemented a process to be a strict ownership um, um, a strict ownership model, model that means um, we always like transport the object from a master to a slave system. Um, there's other possibilities from the um, from the uh, from the library available, which we could choose. For example, there's a merge map or merge sync or combination available where we could make transform transportations of data in both directions for the objects, as long as there's no conflicting underlying um, changes on the on the attributes. Um, uh, in addition to what we saw with the schedule process, there's also a possibility in Symfony where um, you can drop events um, on the system. So that is pretty much what we can see here on the on the client bean. There's a little there's a little REST interface that allows you to drop drop jobs. That is ideally done uh, from server side infrastructure. So like if you have uh, event triggers that you can fire from workflow state changes or um, from object commissions, you can just drop an object um, into into the add job interface, and that would, as an alternative, then trigger the process and, and make sure the synchronization is done according um, according to the to the configuration. So that is uh, that is about the very basic um, the very basic setup that we'll find in Symfony. I do hope that was a was a good first impression on on the possibilities. Um, and the rest is then uh, is then a matter of um, of of the configuration of the of the process implementation itself.